and uh, may peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you. Permit me to begin by appreciating our Creator, the Almighty, for the opportunity to converge here for the unveiling of uh, two important books written by our brother Yusha Ushuaib. Furthermore, I am highly excited and also humbled that one of the books is written in order to document our modest achievements, challenges, successes, and the many more, particularly in public office. However, at a personal level, I always find it difficult to write about my humble self, except when I'm compelled to do that by necessity. Otherwise, I don't personally write. Why? Because I know the biography of a personality cannot be ended as long as he lives in this world. It is only when we clear the screen and depart, then our biography ends. And I think it is more honorable for others to document our life than for us to create time and document it. However, due to the challenge of a mentorship in our country, I have been challenged recently to write something about my academic life, 20 years starting just from 2003 to 2023. The book is currently in the press. However, it's not a biography. It's only to document certain things and also provide a mentorship manual to our younger ones because there is a huge gap today, particularly in northern Nigeria with regards to mentorship. There is a huge gap indeed. Most of our youths do not even know what life is all about today. Their only agenda is how just to become rich without going through any difficulty, without making any sacrifice, and this is indeed a worrisome issue. So the book is in the press entitled as a, a scholar's journey, navigating the academia. And I do hope by next month, most of you will be invited to attend the unveiling of uh, the book is uh, most probably is over 300 pages. And I do hope that uh, you, we will find many answers to many issues in that book. It's just a 20 years of my academic career that I have just documented, <laughs> starting from a programmer up to assistant, uh, graduate assistant, assistant lecturer, lecturer two, lecturer one, also going into even an assistant professor, also becoming the champion of the best university in the world, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, my role at the National Offering University, my, uh, so many things have been documented. And I believe that we will find many answers to many questions when the book is uh, available. And because of this, I will not speak much on it. Furthermore, the theme of uh, today's discussion, which to me is very important, I will only speak on it superficially. That is economic diversification in an evolving cashless society. This theme is very important, particularly the issue of uh, economic diversification, what we need dearly today in Nigeria. And uh, the relationship between economic diversification and my responsibility and also my area of expertise is, is very clear. Technology today, particularly the digital technology, is being deployed all over the world in order to diversify economy. And if you look at the global economy, you will discover that countries that excel in technology, particularly digital technology, are leading the world. According to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in October 2022, 
the world economy was estimated at 100 trillion USD. And the countries that are leading the world, number one is the United States of America, with a GDP of 25.5 trillion USD. Number two is China, with a GDP of 19.9 .9 trillion USD. Number three, Japan, with a GDP of 4.9 trillion USD. Number four, Germany, with a GDP of about 4.3 trillion USD. Number five, the United Kingdom then, but now is India. The United Kingdom with a GDP of 3.4 trillion USD, then India with 3.3 .3 trillion USD. But early this year, India happens to be the fifth largest economy ahead of the United Kingdom, meaning they displace number five. Now the UK is number six and India is number five. If you look at their economy, you will discover that they diversify their economy through what is called today as knowledge-based economy. The economy of the world today doesn't depend on natural resources. Countries in the world are leveraging on their natural resources in order to build their knowledge-based economy. And digital technology and digital economy, both of them are all about knowledge-based economy. Particularly, if you look at the trajectory of first, second, third, and the fourth industrial revolution, you will discover it's all about consolidating knowledge-based economy. First industrial revolution commenced in 18th century in the United Kingdom, particularly in Liverpool and Manchester with the invention of steam power. While the second industrial revolution took place largely in the UK, followed by Belgium, France, Germany, and the United States of America. The second industrial revolution took place in the 19th century with the invention of uh, electricity, mass production, telephone for communication, transistor, radio invention, and many more. So the first, second industrial revolutions were led by the UK. UK alone participated in the first industrial revolution significantly, while in the second industrial revolution, new entries, new countries joined, Belgium, France, Germany, and the US. They were entitled as chess group. They were chasing the United Kingdom at that time. While the Third Industrial Revolution, which took place in the 20th century with the invention of uh, inter in, uh, information and communications technology, world wide webs, internet, what brought about globalization, where you sit in one part of the world witnessing what is happening in another part of the world live on television and in, on other devices. So, ICT brought about the third industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution, which commenced in the 21st century, in the third industrial revolution, we had new entries like Japan and Australia. It was the industrial revolution that Asia participated in. While in the fourth industrial revolution, which we have many entries, even in Africa, we have countries that are part and parcel of a the fourth industrial revolution, with all sense of humility, Nigeria is one of them. So the reason of uh, outlining this is to justify to us that economic diversification today is about knowledge. Countries all over the world are leveraging on their resources in order to build their knowledge-based economy, and this is indeed very important. Most of our initiatives in the digital economy sector is all about building and consolidating our knowledge-based economy in Nigeria. With all sense of humility, the title of the book, 
makes me to feel so humble and also to recall some of our major achievements and gains in the digital economy sector. While reading the title of the book, I only saw the poster of this event online. I couldn't have any privilege of even going through the draft or the book. The first copy I touch is in this venue. So the entire argument in the book is for the author. Because I'm yet to read the book, I only touch it here. And this is how I like it to happen. Because he, he authored the book, and I, only, I even saw the foster only, only online. I was in London, London just uh, two days ago. While just going online, then I saw the poster, and I saw my name, and I look at the auto, I say, okay, that is good. <laughs> and that is even what compelled me to make my trip so brief and be here with you. So whatever <laughs> you read in the book is for my brother, Yusha U Shuaibu. When I author my own book, then you can interrogate me. <laughs> but for this, you may wish to interrogate him. If he finds that he needs my service, then he may wish to engage me as a senior advocate of uh, <laughs> not Nigeria. Permit me to replace that end with another word. <laughs> so, so it is his argument. I could recall that uh, on the 17th and 18th October 2022, just around seven months ago, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, my principal, engaged some uh, international consultants. Even though the engagement was in 2019, but in, on 17 and 18, was the presentation of their evaluation and assessment. So he engaged Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office in the United Kingdom, KPMG, to collaborate with the Office of Banquet Hall here in the State House. With all sense of humility, our performance in the digital economy sector is best in Nigeria. The target given to us in 2019, we were given eight priority areas in the digital economy sector. So ministries were given five, six, seven, eight, and some even nine. We were given eight priority areas. In each and every one of them, we obtained A++. Each and every one. The sector happens to be the best in Nigeria when it comes to delivering economic diversification, and the ministry and its parastatals happen to be the best also, based on that independent assessment. The eight priority areas given to us, based on the agreement we signed with His Excellency, Mr. President, we were challenged to deliver each one by 70%. 70% is A, from the baseline established in 2019. When you achieve 70%, by the end of your third year, then you have delivered A. 60 is B. 50 is C. From that downward, not accepted. Priority area number one given to us in the digital economy is broadband penetration, to increase broadband penetration. Under that one, we got 134%. 64% above the A grade. Number two is 4G penetration in Nigeria. We obtain 127%, 57% above A. Number three is also to develop policies for the digitalization of government processes and policies. Under that one, we obtained 99%. Number four is digital ID in Nigeria to support NIMSI. Under that one, we got 86%. Number five is to develop digital economy policy and strategy and implement. We obtained 103%. Number six is to enhance revenue generation for government. Chairman, your area. It was the most important priority area given to us. 
and we delivered that one by 594 percent. In the ICT sector, from the baseline given to me in 2019, we increased revenue generation quarterly from 51 billion to over 408 billion. An increase of 594 percent. Number seven is to partner with the private sector for job creation for our citizens. We obtain 111 percent. Number eight and the final one is uh, youth and citizens empowerment. Under citizens empowerment, we obtain 137 percent. This is the adjust assessment, and this is my final score cut for this administration. The assessment was done independently by FCDO KPMG in collaboration with the Office of uh, the Secretary to the Government of uh, the Federation. So even though with all these uh, achievements, the author of the book has overblown my triumphant on the cover page. However, since I said, since he happens to be the author, so if you have any issue, you can interrogate him, and he may wish to engage me as a senior advocate of uh, the digital economy in Nigeria. <laughs> Permit me to use the opportunity once again to appreciate the author, our brother, Yusha Ushuaibu, for creating time, out of no time, to document this uh, very important uh, book or very important books. We are really honored, and I will create time to go through the book in, in the next uh, 48 hours. If I have any observation, then definitely I will reach out to him to interrogate him the way I encourage each and every one of you to do the same. Secondly, I also appreciate the effort of uh, the reviewer, our brother Jafar Jafar, represented by our brother Hayatuddin Bello here for presenting an excellent review of uh, the book. Uh, thirdly, to all the members of uh, uh, the team for what they have been doing, not only for us in the digital economy sector, but in Nigeria. One of the things that I always commend Brother Yusha is his objectivity and professionalism. There is no doubt about his objectivity in whatever he does. Any issue he sees, he will reach out to us to interrogate us. Why this happened? How can you justify this? To me, this is how media is supposed to be. If someone says it is raining outside, another guy says, <laughs> It is not raining. The work of a journalist is not to report that person A says it is raining while person B says it is not raining. The work of a journalist is to open the window and check whether it is raining or not. And when he reports the two views, he will finally conclude by saying, this is the most popular view because I have cross-checked it. I have investigated. But today, usually, is not what is being found in Nigeria. Many people forget their professionalism and incline to issues outside that. Some, they will go to any extent to defend because it's from our part of the country or it's from our tribe or it's from our religion without objectivity. Some will criticize. Why? Because it's not part of our tribe, not part of our religion, and also not part of our own country. This is the problem we are having today. Many people are not objective in what they do. Many are not just in what they do. And it is because of this that most of the times you will find that uh, we, we celebrate negative news more than even the positive uh, news. And we are not interested in hearing anything positive about our uh, country. And, uh, and uh, so we, we serve in office, and I'm glad to say that we have built not only a thick skin, but a diamond skin. Uh, to, be, to be fair with you, 
whether you insult me or you praise me, they are all the same to me today. They make no difference. At all, they make no difference. And nothing will be said against me to delay me from my sleeping for two seconds. It has never happened. Nothing in my life. My only concern is my conscience between me and my creator. Whatever I do, I will stand before him and defend myself. That is what is important. Particularly, we join opis with some identities that not all may like us. That is the reality of the situation. Not all will like us. Some will look at you as an Islamic scholar. Yes, I am an Islamic teacher, unapologetic one. My religion makes me to become a good person, to be just, to be fair, to be kind, to be generous. Without my religion, I am nothing. So religion doesn't make people to be evil, but rather it makes people to be good. Without religion, I will not be here. Without religion, I will not be fair and just. My religion compels me to be fair, just trustworthy, to be kind, to be generous to all the people I interact with. So without my religion, definitely I will never be the person I am today. I work with many Nigerians, Muslims and Christians from not from the South. Nobody has ever come to me who works with me directly and say that you are unfair or unjust. Sometimes people from the other part of the country appreciate us more than those that we come from the North. Why? They usually come to us with a mindset that we are not anticipating justice here. When they see extraordinary justice, then they will become flabbergasted. That is the situation. So, so I will continue to remain as an Islamic teacher, and I'm very proud to be one, and it's my best identity, and I have no apology for that. My religion makes me a better person, and I will continue to improve. Once again, thank you very much for being here. May the Almighty bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much, the young uh, author.